morning! It's Thursday the 1st of June 2017 and according to the lady on the weather this morning on BBC Breakfast, was it Carol Smiley? I can't remember if it was Carol, I, look, I like Carol Smiley, don't you? She's always happy, like me. Happy, happy, happy. You've got to be happy, darling, in these dark, dismal times. You really have. Well, according to the lady on the BBC weather this morning, it is, and I quote, the meteorological first day of summer. Now, is that any different to the normal first day of summer? I don't understand what she means by that. What? Oh, just a minute. I nearly forgot. I nearly forgot. It's time to change our Barry Manilow photo. Just a moment, please. There we are. Very, very important. We start getting, you start getting, you start getting death threats and things like that if you forget to do this. Just a minute now. May and June. What's Barry doing in June? There he is. Oh, I don't need a bit of salad tape, I don't think. I'll put a bit there anyway. There he is. Standing there in a rather nice, it looks like a linen white jacket. I was, I was looking for one of those actually. Not, not quite white, sort of, you know, just off white. And I couldn't find one. Oh, it's, he's crooked. Just a minute. There we are. Oh, God. Should have done this before you started, shouldn't I? One minute. <clears throat> He's a bit crooked, isn't he? Is that better? That'll do, wouldn't it? Is that... <laughs> is that straight? No, it's not, is it? Oh, God, blimey. One minute. No, I'll, well, I'll, I'll make an adjustment later. I hope you don't mind. There he is, Barry, in his June picture, standing... Like an angel, like a little angel he is when he sings those wonderful songs. Stay, why don't you be with me tonight, Baba, stay. Yes, yeah, so it's, is it straight now? It's a little bit straighter, isn't it, Mark? Yes, I shall, I shall do my best with that. Well, as I say, first day of the meteorological summer. However, are you a grass cutter? Because I come across this this morning. Um, it says... More mowing the lawn in this morning's Super Saw Away Daily Mail, dated on the first day of summer, June the 1st, 2017. Mowing the lawn is physically demanding and a time-consuming job that can be the bane of gardeners' lives in the summer months. Now, I don't agree with that at all. I love doing that. Get my little mower up. You know, doing all the little edges, making sure you... Hoover up those nasty little bits of dead bits and pieces all over your grass. How is that? I don't find it a, a, a chore at all doing that. I enjoy doing it. I haven't got a massive garden. I think it's, it's, it's big enough. You know, it's not it's certainly not tiny, but it's not massive. It's not a garden where I've got to, like, get on one of those, you know, uh, grass-cutting tractor-type affairs. Have you got one of those? Oh, that must be fun, mustn't it? Starting up the outfit. As the little cutter goes around, watch out for cats. Watch out for cats while you are cutting your lawn. No, I enjoy doing that. I, do, I generally do it at this time of the year where I probably go to twice a week now. However, according to this article, a leading garden designer says many of us are cutting our grass far too frequently. Probably me. This bloke says longer grass will produce wild flowers, which look 100% better than in neatly mown lawn. And he's got a point here. You know when we cut those dandelions and buttercups, you know, you see the leaves, and, oh, quick, get rid of that quickly, or you, or you spray on that weed killer, something like that. If you're in London, you know, for garden, think flower pot. If you're in a little, little balcony or something like that, a flower pot. I mean, you can close your eyes and imagine that you've got a garden, couldn't you? Huh? He suggests we should let the grass grow and simply mow a path through it to allow access to the rest of the garden. I think he's got a point there. Now, you may remember the show last year when uh, we went to Coworth Park, uh, which is like a really posh hotel here in uh, Royal Berkshire with massive grounds and they got polo and they had a meadow. <clears throat> now, it wasn't quite wild. What they'd done is sprayed a load of seeds all over the place in a very large area. And you could see all these delightful, beautiful little flowers sticking up all different colours. I don't know if you remember the show last year. Uh, if you type in United Kingdom Talk Coworth... Let's see if that works. Let me try it for you. 
because you might want to watch that a little bit later. It's it's only a it's about a ten minute show. That's all. Uh, when we talk our outside broadcast cameras, in other words, my iPhone uh, into Coworth Park. Let me see if that works. I'll type it into YouTube. United Kingdom talk. Coworth Park. I went. I went twice last year. Actually, once with my aunt. There it is. Straight away. There it is. Uh, September. I went in September. Strangely enough, the second one doesn't come up. I've only got the first one come up. If you type in, oh, it must be. Uh, I don't know. If you type in United Kingdom Talk Friday the second of September two thousand and sixteen, you will see the one that I did in Coworth Park with my aunt, Aunt Brenda, and you'll see the meadow there, and it's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. It really is. Little bees flying all over the place. And uh, oh, hang on a minute. What have I done now? Oh, my Lord. I've closed. The, oh, there it is. No, I thought I'd close that. I'll close the picture down. Um, And it's just stunning. Poppies, little yellow flowers, purple flowers, blue flowers in this large area. And you, you could walk through it. What they've done is, is put a path right away through it. And this grass, it wasn't that high. It was this high. The grass was this high, the flowers, it was so beautiful. So I, I hear what he's saying here. Speaking at the Hay Festival of Arts and Literature, uh, the bloke who also works as a TV presenter who also argued against using chemicals to create the perfect lawn. He said, the amount of energy, time and money we spend on simply mowing our lawns is a big investment. And of course, chemicals which are applied to lawns, I don't do that or advocate it because they are wonderful environments in themselves. And you've only got to allow the lawn to get four inches long to get daisies and prunella and all those little things. I think he's got a point here. I mean, whether or not you can put up with it while because it doesn't always grow even either does it you get a, bit, a long bit there and a short bit there presumably if you leave it alone at some point it all sort of i mean it won't look uneven then it's only because it's so short that it looks even doesn't it i mean i think my cat would have a field day out there she gets lost as it is <laughs> good she was very good this morning katie the cat no no poo anywhere in the kitchen you know, in the little area that I've got with covered in newspaper now. There was no smell or anything, so I have to get up early and I, I, I open the door carefully. I have a little sniff. No, nope, she hasn't been. Well, and then I quickly put her outside in case she decides to go while I'm still there. And she is at this moment in the garden, in the very short grass cut garden, going round in her circles as usual until she gets tired and then she go back to sleep again. <laughs> Bless her. She was a good day today, Kat. A good girl this morning, Kat. Um, the bloke added, if you tread the, uh, into the soil in the autumn... Oh, hang on. Gardeners could easily yellow rattle an attractive wildflower that increases species diversity if they plant it in the autumn. If you tread it into the soil in the autumn, it then gets hold and it's semi-parasitic on the grasses, so it weakens the strength of the grasses and allows windows for other things in the meadow. Uh, like wildflowers and things like that. I think he's got a point there. Does anyone have a garden and, and grow it wild at all? Huh? Have you got a garden or anything like that? If so, why don't you tell me? Lines are now open. 0208 The phone number's up there now if you want to call in at some point this morning, OK? 0208 3477 There's also a Skype. You can Skype in on United Kingdom Talk, OK? So once again, phone number 020-8144-3477, or you can Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. All right. Now, do me a favour. No politics. No politics. I don't do politics, really. I have an opinion, but I don't really talk about them. I don't think I'm intelligent enough to do politics. And... Quite honestly, I'm getting a little bit fed up with some of the Facebook posts now. It's all very well putting up there who you believe in. But for then people to start attacking you left, right and centre, I've had a bit of enough of that, really, to be honest. Um, so please, no, if you're going to ring in, don't start going on about elections and things like that. It does. It's, doing my, it's starting to do my head in now. Some people in particular, and they go on and on and on. Now, myself, I've put the occasional picture up there of little Theresa May, but that's about it. That's it. And others, they go on and on and on. And quite honestly, I've started unfollowing people. Not unfriending them. Unfollowing because because I'm sick of seeing it. They just, it just doesn't, it just, they just don't let up. 
So I've had a little bit of enough of that. So please, if you're going to call in, we don't do politics on here. Just fun and happiness. Sometimes the occasional sad story. There's a sad story coming up today. Uh, there is a sad story coming up today. All right, towards the end of the show. Let's say good morning to the early risers this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam, who has become at Slimmer's World Man of the Year. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Congratulations, Adam the Plumber. Well done, sir. That is fantastic. Man of the Year. That doesn't necessarily mean I don't think that you've you've slimmed to the most in the year. Uh, there's other things involved there. So congratulations to Adam for becoming Man of the Year. Well done, sir. Peter, who's 72, I think he was, said he was 72. He comes to my Slimmers World group in uh, Wokenham, where I'm, I've started going on Tuesdays. I went to my first one on Tuesday. Um, he became Man of the Year this week as well. Incidentally, the Slimmers World thing is going okay. Now, remember, I went on... Um, oh, it's, it says there's motion at my front door. Let me just see who that is out there. Uh, I'll show you this. Look, I'll show you this. This is my door alarm. Oh, hang on. I'll be a bit too bright. Let's see. Oh, no one there. No one there. OK, probably a cat that just walked across or something like that. Uh, I'm waiting, actually, for a phone call from uh, another air conditioning man. You may remember a bloke came in to do my air con uh, to have a look at the air conditioner and says, you need, you need a new one. Needs a new compressor. Well, a new compressor is X amount of pounds. A complete new system is, is actually cheaper than a new compressor for that system I've got there. Um, so uh, I've, I've waited for a quote and it still hasn't come yet. So I've gone to someone else. And he's already given me a rough quote on the phone, which I'm happy with, a very, very fair quote. And he broke it down immediately and he said, well, the actual unit is X hundreds of pounds and it cost me X to send these people in. I'll charge you probably around this. And I was happy with that because I'd already looked on the line and seen how much generally air conditioning units are. That's for this room. Now, I can't have one of the cheap ones in this room like I've got in the bedroom. I say cheap. I mean, the one in the bedroom was 350 quid. Right. That's that's like a wheel around thing, you know, although it doesn't move from room to room. It stays where it is in that room. Got a hole in the side of the wall and everything else. Um, But it's a little bit noisy. It's OK to sleep to. It's not like a noise that keeps you awake. It's like a humming noise, like a fan going around, which is perfectly all right. In here, I can't have this because you'd get annoyed. Oh, what's that noise? Oh, that noise is really annoying. I mean, we get enough complaints about the music before we start. Do, 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 do. Oh, you love it. Don't get me that. You love that music, don't you? Yes. Do, 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 do. I think I should play it two or three times before we start, you know, doing the countdown. If you're one of the late joiners, you won't see that music. You need to get there at the beginning. Click the um, subscribe button or something like that. I'm not quite sure how it works. Huh? Um, but yes, going back to... So he's, he's coming in. Um, he's he's going to pop in this afternoon just to check what, what I need and what have you. And um, hopefully I'll get that sorted because it's going to get very hot in this room with the computers and things running away. And old computers as well. I say old. A couple of years old those computers are. And it's funny then, just not worth anything, are they, computers, once you bought, bought them out of a shop? A bit like buying a car, isn't it? You lose like, I don't know, 90% of the value the moment you walk out of the blooming shop. <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, so back to Slimmer's World. Yeah, it's going all right. Uh, remember, I went on Tuesday morning and I started immediately that afternoon. Yesterday, let me tell you what I had to eat yesterday. Uh, in the morning, I had one egg and half a tin of baked beans. Yum. Oh, so much better than bran flakes. They really are. So that's scrambled uh, with just a little bit of soya milk, you know, to thin the egg out. Always find it a bit thick, if you see what I mean. You know, scrambled eggs without putting anything in. Uh, for lunch, I kind of, I was doing my Waitrose new Slimmers World shopping yesterday and it all got a bit late. So I kind of almost missed lunch. So I had half a packet of corn cocktail sausages and I had a ban uh, some strawberries in fat-free yoghurt. Now, I don't know if you've tried fat-free yoghurt. It's fine. I thought I wouldn't like it. It, it. It's really nice, actually. It's it's thinner. I would say it's thinner than normal yogurt, but it's fine. You should try it. That is not low-fat yogurt, fat-free yogurt, ble completely fat-free yogurt. So I had that for pudding. Then I went to bed. Then I went to work. On the way to work, I had two bananas, okay, because I can't eat before I go to work in case I get my IBS problem. Oh, 
God, it just goes on and on. Uh, which actually, I have to say, touch wood, hasn't been a problem for a week. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then when I got home, I had a corn cottage pie. Four sins. If you know Slimmer's World, it works on sins. I'm allowed 25 sins a day, OK? So that was four sins and a packet of vegetables. No sins. Uh, so yesterday, I think I had for five, six, I think I had about seven or eight sins. I'm allowed 25 a day. But tonight, tonight, I'm being taken out uh, by the manager of the place in Clapham that I work, because it's my last night there. Uh, I'm leaving tonight. Uh, they're they're going to be opening till three o'clock. And uh, I can't be working till three o'clock in the morning now. So I'm leaving there tonight and the manager wants to take me out for dinner. So he said, what do you want? And I thought, oh, well, I don't, you know, I'm so awkward going out for meals. And there is a pizza place next door. So I shall have a thin crust, small pizza. So I've got to watch. You can save up the Sims. You can. OK, so I've got to watch what I have to do. If I have no Sims at all, again, sort of this morning and this afternoon, I can have that tonight. OK, and also, you know, come from yesterday as well. I had hardly any yesterday as well. So that should work for me. So slim as well, going very well and surprisingly easy. I haven't felt hungry. I did feel hungry yesterday afternoon and also on the way to work. I did. A bit of cake was offered to me at work. No, thank you. I don't want the cake. I had me two bananas on the way there. Um, so that was fine. I don't really feel hungry or anything like that. So working well. All right. Good morning to Alan Russell, uh, who came along to the karaoke on Monday. Excellent song. Moaned as usual. Something to do with the set. He always moans, Alan. You always moan about something. What is wrong with you, dear? Moan, 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 moan. You're a mo Are you sure you're a real man or are you a moaning mini, dear? Are you a, mo <laughs> a moaning mini? I think you are. God's sake. Good morning, Alan. Morning to Heidi. Um, Rod Brown's with us. Hello, Rod. Uh, Shania's on the Isle of Wight. Greetings, Shania. Um, Rod Brown's there. Ray Reynolds. Uh, there he goes. Ray Reynolds again. Going on about the nights getting longer. For Christ's sake, Ray. Will you enjoy the summer while it's here? The meteorological first day of summer. According to, I think it was Carol Smiley this morning. Hi, hello. And welcome to the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon we need smiling people as politicians because there's not an awful lot of smiles at the moment going around, is there? Huh? Uh, morning, Rod. Mark Whittle, morning to you, sir. Uh, Shania says you're on early this morning. Yes, uh, I got up quarter to eight. Quarter to eight. Of course, what's happening now is that because my nights finish earlier, uh, after t tonight is my last two o'clock shift. After tonight, my latest nights will be midnight. My latest nights will be midnight, which means I'm getting to bed earlier and getting up earlier as well. That's what's happening, Shania. It's, I think it's good. I prefer to be up early in the morning. I really do. You know, if I could get up, I, I think early morning is a wonderful time, especially in the summer. If I could get up at five o'clock in the morning, that five, six, seven, thirty, I'll push it to eight o'clock. I think the best time of the day in the summer is, is no, go back an hour, is, is 4 a.m. until 8 a.m. That is the best part of the day. It absolutely is. It's quiet. It's fresh. I've got birds singing outside, squirrels running up and down, blooming trees, upsetting my cat. <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, the magpies. Do you know, I think I've got magpies. We've got a lot of magpies around here. And when I put the cat's food outside, <clears throat> they 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 come down and nick it. While, and of course, she's so old, she can't move very fast. They nick it while she's sitting there. Aren't they horrible? I may have to get my air rifle out and shoot them. I'm sorry, it's the only way. Bang! Dead magpie. Anyone? Do magpie pie. Can you make magpie pie? Who wants that? Won't be any good for me, will it? Magpie pie. Uh, morning to Jason Alexander. Morning, Jason. Um, did you put a... Uh, morning. Why do you think of May's no show on the TV debate? Ah, because I don't do politics on this programme. No politics on this programme. I've made a, an official... Uh, an official... Um, uh, what's it? I've made an official decision at higher level of the uh, chairman of United Kingdom Talk and its associated companies, networks and affiliates. Thank you, Jason. Uh, morning to Wolfgang in Germany. Good morning, my friend. Do you know, it must have been over a year now since we missed you. 
I hope you're coming over soon, Wolfgang. We'll make you feel welcome. Darren Lees, where? Paul Gallagher. Terry, hello, Terry, up in Coventry. Diane Jeb, good morning, Diane. Uh, and Alan says, I was complaining that the door wasn't open, so it was so hot in there. Oh, we can't open the door, dear, when karaoke's going on, especially not with your voice, love. Cow, can you imagine the neighbours hearing you sing? Huh? Dear me. We have to have the air con Have you seen the air conditioning in the central station? My God, that is about 800,000 years old, a minimum of, isn't it? It's one of those old things up there. Anyway, hopefully mine's going to get all fixed and nice. And in a couple of weeks, it will be very cool in here once again. Actually, the quote he's given me is actually less than um, uh, the, the when it was originally installed. Isn't that good? I meant to tell you, uh, I got a nice text from Linda at Slimming World, who is our um, kind of uh, uh, mentor. Got a text from her yesterday. Look at this. One minute, please. Bring it up my text now. Thank you. Uh, where are you, Linda? There she is. Here it is. Here it is. Look at this. Good afternoon, Chris. It was lovely to see you yesterday, and welcome to Slimming World in Wokingham. I hope you have a fabulous first week, enjoying all those lovely free foods. Free foods are ones that don't contain sins, you see, like bananas, strawberries, generally all vegetables, uh, generally all fruit and that sort of thing. If you have any problems, uh, don't forget the diary. Uh, please get in touch. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? You get a little text like that. You know, and that's all you need to just edge you along a little bit further. Because I've got my food diary, which I haven't done yet, actually. One minute. I must fill this in. Here's the food diary. <clears throat> I did show you this the other day. Oh, where is it now? Gosh. Weekly. There it is. Food diary. Food diary. So I've got to fill that in for her. And then she, she has a quick scan over that to see if there's any problems. It's fantastic. All for just £5 a week. Absolute bargain. It is. Uh, Terry says it's beautiful. I agree. It's beautiful to see early mornings. Oh, it is, Terry. Especially if you're on holiday somewhere. Have you ever got, got, got up early to watch the sun rising over the Caribbean Sea or something like that? Or the Pacific Ocean? which is uh, I saw many times when I went on a, a little holiday to Australia. My, my cousin was running the police on Norfolk Island, which is a tiny little island in the South Pacific. And it's just stunning there, Terry. It's so quiet. And at night, there, there's no street lamps. There's one street lamp on the whole island. And the stars that you can see at night there, including, of course, the Southern Cross. Beautiful, just beautiful. Alan says, the couple that sang All I Ask of You, they were awesome. Yeah, that. oh, that was lovely. Is that from Phantom of the Opera? No more sa da 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 oh I think me and Matt Gardner should sing that together. All I Ask of You. And say you love me every night. Da da da. Yes, I like that. I like that bat time. You went on another holiday, isn't it, Terry? Huh? I don't think you've been on holiday now for at least three days, lovey. Surely Terry and Martin should be going on holiday again soon. <laughs> Terry, you may be interested to know that that whole DJing thing that I fell out of love with takes another step back tonight. Uh, I'm leaving the two brewers tonight, which only leaves me DJing. And, and I say DJing, it's not really. Uh, hosting, more of a hosting on Saturday nights. Um, Terry, who you can see on there, he runs uh, a place called Rainbows in Coventry. Very successful uh, nightclub in Coventry. And I did DJ him there for about two and a half years, three years or something like that. And eventually the journey got to me. Not just the journey, but I was fed up with DJing. And that's the truth of it. Isn't it funny that that's happened? Interestingly enough, uh, the same thing happened with my very good friend, David Rosen, um, who was a DJ at the Black Cat before me. He was there before me. He was like the main DJ there. And um, he got fed up with it around about the same age as me, maybe a bit younger. And he, get, he, he gave up the whole entertainment thing. I kind of moved across to karaoke, which I just love. I love doing karaoke. I really do. It's, it's the people that come. Not the great singers. It's not necessarily the great singers. It's just the, the, the atmosphere and the fun that you have at a karaoke night. It really is. Um, and, uh, of course, I do the little quiz night on Wednesday. Quiz night last night. A little bit quiet again last night. 
Um, I don't know why that's gone quiet. It's not quite making sense why why the quiz night has gone quiet, but it has. Um, but we got on with it last night and a great atmosphere, you know, people in there. The two teams have one, two, three, four teams. Four teams last night. We should be getting 10, 11, 12 teams in there. But uh, on the other hand, they were large teams. Uh, there was a dog in there, little staffy type dog. Which, oh, it was adorable, this dog. And it was all over me, licking and all that business, very friendly. And then on the microphone, we would, I think it was one of the questions, the word came up, cat. Well, this dog went berserk, dear. I thought it was going to have my leg off. <laughs> Eventually, the girl apologised and had to take him outside for a walk to calm him down. But I said cat and he didn't like the word cat, this dog. <laughs> Poor little doggy. Woo, woo, woo. Mind you, my Katie would have seen him. My Katie don't muck around like that. Any dogs come by, she hisses at them and they they walk away immediately. Mm. Terry says, it's hard work DJing if you don't enjoy it. Chris, we appreciate you coming that way. Terry, I enjoyed it and you know I loved you. And all the, your staff there are lovely. Such lovely people, all your staff. There's not a single one of them I didn't dislike. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary's just on another planet and he bless his heart. We love Gary. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know, it's funny, Terry. I've got a lad now. He's straight. Uh, comes down now to the karaoke in Central Station. His name's Tony, um, who, who was a customer at uh, Rainbows for a long time. And uh, he's kept kept in contact with me. And he comes down to Central Station now for the karaoke and says how much he used to enjoy going up to Rainbows. We had a couple of really good... i never forget that New Year's Eve we did there. Do you know that's that's two and a half years ago, that New Year's Eve, isn't it? Do you remember the first one? Well, we had that... I think we had... A, I had my best mate with me and his boyfriend and um, you and Martin, and you all came into the DJ box at midnight. That was such a nice moment. Uh, it really was. It was lovely. It was lovely. I mean, you never know. Maybe I'll get back into it again. But not playing some of this ghastly modern music, dear. You know, ooh, rap, 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 rap. That talk, as Barry Manilow calls it, talking music. Rap music is not my cup of tea at all, I'm afraid. Morning to David Jackson, who joins us today. Uh, I think you do a rock programme. Do you still do a, a, a rock programme? I do. Alan says Cliff Richard and Sarah Brightman was, was the song that um, uh, the two, uh, it was Sam and Jason, wasn't it, who sung Sarah Brightman and Cliff Richard, you know. La -da 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 and I started crying. Oh, you spotted that, did you? You spotted me crying. Oh, I'm terrible like that. If there's an emotional song to be had, I will cry. I'm warning you that now. Not the stuff you sing. God, I'm laughing when you're singing, Alan, to be honest. Eh? Now check out this weather today. Here in Bracknell and surrounding areas for the first meteorological day of summer. I'm surprised I'm able to say that word. Meteorological. So let's say it together. One, two, three. Meteorological. Not a word I like. There's, it's got a, a an unpleasant ring to it, isn't it? I mean, notice that there are certain words that have a really unpleasant ring to them. One of the worst is abortion. Doesn't that word just sound awful? Abortion. And murder. Murder. Any other words that are really awful? Spider. Spider. It's a nasty sounding word. Snake. Trust in me. Trust in me. Close your eyes. I wonder if that's on the karaoke. Let me have a look. Uh, I might be on the online one. <clears throat> I think I should do that at karaoke. Trust in me from Disney. Trust in me. One moment, please. Oh, is it Etta, Etta James? Is that the same song? I wonder if that's the same song. Hang on. Does that sound right? I don't know. Hang on. Trust in me. No, different song altogether. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. Yes, Disney songs. We like Disney songs. Anyway, the weather. The weather. Look at this today. So what's the time now? 20 to 10. Uh, 11 o'clock, 68 degrees. 12 o'clock, 70 degrees. 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 73 degrees Fahrenheit today. Yes. 
What do you mean centigrade? I don't know. Centigrade is foreign. I'm not doing foreign. I'm doing English. English ones, dear. English. 73 degrees at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Isn't that excellent news, boys and girls? You will need those little speedos on. Have you got a pair of speedos, Terry? What are you and Terry? Is that what you wear when you're on the beach, you and Martin? A little pair of tiny little spandex speedos. <laughs> Shania says, I'm very surprised that you can say that word too. Metriological. Thank you. Alan says, what's the latest New Year's party you done? I like to finish around 2 p.m. Uh, 2 a.m. Uh, well, it was Central Station this, uh, this year. The thing is with the New Year's Eve, whatever the night is, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, whatever the night is, you must offer it to the place that you usually work at on that night. So tonight, uh, so this year, I think it's this year. I think this year it's a Sunday, isn't it? That's a minute now. It wasn't a leap year, was it? Huh? So, uh, yeah, it's a Sunday. So this year, I will have to offer it to um, um, the Camden Eye. Now, my guess is that they won't. They will probably want a DJ that night. So that's a, I might well be free, but that's okay. You know, it doesn't bother me whether I work or not New Year's Eve anymore. So that that's what you. I mean, it, it, it's just morally right to offer your New Year's Eve not not to the man paying the most money. You shouldn't do that. Gets you a very, very bad name indeed. You need to offer it to whoever's night it is there. And if they say, well, thank you very much, but no, we want to do this, that, and that, that's fine. And then you can go to the IS bidder if you want to. I, I tend to go for the job that I want to do the most. You know, it, it was never really about money. As I keep, I've said this hundreds and hundreds of times on this show. Doing what I do was never about the money. I've done very well. But it was never about the money, and it still isn't now. I mean, I don't really need to work anymore, to be honest. You know, I've worked so hard, you know, for years and years, every night, as uh, as Terry will tell you. Uh, Terry says, a mankini. Is that what you wear? Um, no, come on, I don't believe you wear surf shorts. Uh, you've got a mankini, haven't you? Oh, my God. There was a girl in the swimming pool yesterday with a mankini on, with a girl kini on. I mean, it was just like bits of string. God's sake, man. There was no hardly any material as well. I think she'd shaved. <laughs> Shania says, can you put that in centigrade? Oh, do you want me to? Not really. Okay, about 25, 26. About 25. Maybe, no, no, maybe not quite 25. 75, uh, half that, take away 30, is about 23, 24 today. All right, Shania. Of course, it might be a little bit cooler on the Isle of Wight where you've got that lovely... Ocean breeze coming across you there, haven't you? Eh? Yes, you have. You'll like that. All right, what else have I got to tell you tonight? Um, Slimmer's World. Uh, I did Waitrose shopping yesterday, boys and girls, uh, with my Slimmer's World app. I told you I'm allowed 25 sins a day. So how many sins are in each item? Well, they've got an app, and you just type in what you're buying. For example, the corn... Um, cottage pie, corn cottage pie, and it comes up, it says 300 grams or 400 grams, 400 grams, well, four sins, just four. So I'm going around the, I mean, I won't always have to do that, because I know that now. But when you're starting out, you've got to get these things right. And there's a wonderful Slimmer's World app, you just type in the item that you want to purchase, and um, and that's it. Yes, do you buy it? Okay, I'll have that. In the basket it goes. So we've done the Waitrose shopping yesterday. Um, interesting item on the BBC Breakfast News this morning. Now, I didn't know this. Hot water or cold water to wash your hands in? What do you reckon? Hot or cold water? Huh? Doesn't matter. According to the news item this morning on the BBC Breakfast, um, some scientists have discovered hot, cold or hot water will do the job just as well. Not only that, you can use either antibacterial or normal washing, uh, soap washing liquid. It does exactly the same job, apparently, according to the news item. Scientists have been doing tests. Did you know that? I always thought you had to use hot, as hot water as, as your little paws could get under. You know, it usually ended up in red raw hands because I tend to overdo things. When I cook burgers, they come out black. <laughs> I'm, honestly, they do. 
You know what it's like with burgers? You sit there, oh, come on, you're looking at the clock and they're still not changing colour. And if I, well, I'll just go and do something. And then suddenly uh, you, you, I, I come up here, I start tapping away on the computer or something, and then the smoke alarm. A beep, 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 beep. And that button on the smoke alarm never seems to work properly. You know, the silence one. Why doesn't that work? And why isn't the silence button a proper button? Have you noticed that? On all smoke alarms, you've got the red button in the middle, usually, and you push it to test. At the, I've got one in here. One moment, please. I haven't tested this for a while. We will now do a live smoke alarm test here in the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. One moment, please. There we go. Let's do that up there. Now, I need a poking thing. What have I got? That'll do. That'll do. My duster. Here we go. Right. Testing smoke alarm now. Testing. Oh, oh, I can't get the thing there. Oh, oh. Oh, the beep, 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 beep. There we are. Everything is functioning correctly, I'm pleased to say. Ooh. Oh. Broken. <laughs> oh no! I've broken it! I've had this for years! Ah, disappointing. Maybe I can just use it like that now. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed. Look, I've broken my little fairy dusting thing. Very, very disappointed. So, smoke alarm working correctly and in it and, and efficiently here in the Mirable Studios, I'm pleased to say. But on the uh, kitchen ones, you have uh, a, a silencer button as well, but it's never a proper button, is it? Have you noticed that? It's always like a, a bit of plastic what says silence on it or, or words to that effect. Why don't they just put a proper button on there? It annoys me. I like proper buttons. I've got to be honest, even on my iPhone, can we have some proper buttons on there, please? Not just some sort of flat screen on there. Lots of people get, all, all the technos are out there. They're getting very, very excited about the iPhone 8. My mates be already going on about it. Coming out in, is it September? September it's coming out and they get so excited, don't they? The people just want things all the time. What's all that about? Oh, want that, want that, want that. Every bright and shiny, I must have one. Why can't people be happy with what they've got? Look at this studio, for example. Like something out of the 1970s, dear. Everything still works. Why do I need to replace everything every time something new comes along? Unless it's completely broken down, like my air conditioning. A vast, enormous, ex enormous expense here in the Mirable Studios. But if you're self-employed, you will know these words I'm going to come out with now. Are you ready? Tax deductible item. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taxman. Air conditioning for the Mirable Studios as it's part of my business. It is indeed. Yes, it is. Hmm. Um, let's go somewhere. Uh, good morning to John True, karaoke singer extraordinaire. Terry says, I need a bit more material than a mankini. Terry, I'm not saying nothing. I'm saying nothing, lovey. Just a tiny little bit of perhaps of more material, but you may or may not need. I would never say that. I would never say anything like that. Uh, Alan says, what sort of dinners do you have on Sundays? Uh, actually, just a normal dinner that I'd had during the week. I don't do anything special on a Sunday. I remember my mum, we always used to have a roast dinner on Sunday. Oh, she could cook. <gasps> she used to do these roast potatoes in like a, a silvery, and it was it's ever so old, but it, it, it didn't rust or anything like that in this silver, like, you know, I nearly said bedpan then. <laughs> I nearly said bedpan then for some strange, mysterious reason. Not bedpan. In the in the oven pan, and it, I don't know what she used to cook. I think cooking. I think she did them in cooking. Baked potatoes. They were absolutely delicious. And she would come out, and you'd have your dinner, and then she'd come. Do you want some more? And she'd come out holding this thing, holding this metal um, oven dish thing, and she'd have it like that, and she'd have a spoon there, and she'd scrape the bottom. You know the bit at the bottom that sticks, sticks to the thing, and has gone all crispy and hard she used to scrape that out and put it on my table complete with the grease oh absolutely delicious and we never used to pour in any weight i could have had half a pound of those covered in grease oh no weight would go on now i mean last week last week i was in the bp garage and i walked past a bag of crisps 
I was 10 foot away from this bag of crisps and I put on a stone. How does that happen? It's so much harder the, uh, the older you get, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> so, yeah, I just have a normal dinner on a Sunday, really. It would be vegetables and something. I try and have vegetables every single day. All right. Um, good morning to Vic, Vicky Sachs Coburg. Vicky Sachs Coburg. That's her name. Where are you, darling? Hello, Vicky. Welcome to our little show. Uh, my favourite drink, tea. Tea is my favourite drink. I don't drink alcohol at all unless unless I'm on a plane and it's free. <laughs> and in which case, because I don't drink alcohol, half a glass of champagne and I'm under the blooming table. I absolutely am. I mean, I've got to drive. I've got a bar mitzvah to go to on Saturday. Uh, I've never been to one before. It's my best friend's, um, uh, one of my best friend's son's bar mitzvah. He's turned 13. And they have a little prayer service on, on Saturday morning. I'm going to that. I'm supposed to be going Sunday, but I, I've completely forgotten that there was a Sunday thing there. So I may or may not be able to go. I've just uh, emailed the manager of the place I work out on Sundays um, to see if he minds me having this Sunday off. It's not fair to him that I didn't tell him before, but I'd completely forgotten about this Sunday for some reason. Um, so I should be going on Sunday as well. And of course, the drink will be flowing there, but I won't be able to have any anyway because I'm uh, dry. And besides, I, don't, I really don't drink at all. I don't. I wouldn't want to drink. You know, tea is my favourite drink. Strong tea with very, very little amount of soya milk in it. None of this half a bottle of milk in business. No, thank you, Vicky. Um, Shania says, got to go now. Bye-bye, Shania. She's off to do her shopping this morning. Go on, chop, chop, darling. Chop, 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 chop. Um, today, I wanted to read you a little bit about John Noakes, boys and girls. Now, John Noakes was, in my mind, Blue Peter's best ever children's presenter. Now, of course, you could say that's because it was my age. That's when I was a child. And therefore, it's, it's a bit like, who is your Doctor Who? Well, my Doctor Who was John Pertwee. My Blue Peter man was John Noakes. And um, here's a picture of him now. There we are, John. Oh, hang on. Oh, wrong bit, wrong button. Oh, God. Just a minute. Oh, there we are. That's it. Here we are. Here's a picture of John Noakes. That's John Noakes. That picture taken in the 1970s. And that was his beloved dog, Shep. He absolutely adored that dog. And he was my childhood hero. Above anyone else, John Noakes was my childhood hero. And he was part of what I call the Blue Peter Dream Team. There they all are together. Uh, you've got Peter Purvis on the left. Look at those old clothes there, 1970s. Leslie Judd next to him. Now, she joined later on, uh, but I kind of she was kind of almost part of the dream. She was all right. There's nothing wrong with her, but she wasn't quite in the dream team of the other three. So uh, it started with the three of them. Um, there were people presenting it before them, but the, to me, these were the dream team. So Peter Purvis on the left, Leslie Judd next to him. That's Valerie Singleton next to Leslie Judd. And John Noakes there on the right. They were the Blue Peter dream team. And I absolutely loved Blue Peter. And John Noakes did, did just... He was just mad. He was absolutely mad and off his rocker. And some of the stuff he did, he would jump out of uh, aeroplanes and things like that. Anyway, I wanted to read you uh, this morning an article that was in the garden. We should have done this two days ago, but I've been so busy with other little bits and pieces. And if you want to comment on it afterwards, then please, or, or doing it, and I'll read out your comments after I've read about him, OK? Uh, so this was in The Guardian, not my favourite newspaper, I've got to be honest, but I came across this article written by Lucy Mangan, and it goes on. There used to be just three television channels. There used to be a universal recognised tea time five o'clock so at five o'clock that was children's time on the telly on bbc one on itv of course since then we've got all these multi-channels all the children's programs are on their own channels and i think in a way for me that's a shame i i understand why they did it but five o'clock on bbc one and itv was children's time um there used to be john noakes 
Now the last of these three poles around which childhood slung has gone. John Noakes has died aged 83. He was, of course, a Blue Peter presenter. He did his share of cooking, uh, cooking spots, empty washing up, liquid bottle based, make this, that and the other and announcements of the latest milk bottle top collection target hit. But from 1965 to 1978, he was primarily the Tea Time magazine programme's action man. And he absolutely was. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't miss Blue Peter. There were no video recorders, anything like that. Five o'clock, you need to come in off the street and watch Blue Peter. I watched it. I, I, he, I, he was just such a hero to me. Even if you were too young to have seen the originals, his most eye-catching feats have lived on clip shows, repeats and anniversary programmes. The five-mile high freefall with the RAF's Flying Falcons in 1973. Come in a spectacular cropper doing the Cresta run a few years after that and showing views at viewers his bruised backside, his bottom, a few weeks later in the studio. Do you remember that? <laughs> He was in that. He went in one of those sledges, you know, the ice sledges. Well, I wouldn't go on one of those. Enjoying the havoc <coughs> created by the baby bee elephant, who was unaware of the need to stay continent during a live broadcast in 1969, when the elephant pooed all over the studio. <laughs> Amid numberless ascents of steeples and spinning poles, his ladder climbed to the top of Nelson's column in 1977 without a safety harness, or according to him later, though denied by producer Biddy Baxter, insurance still stands out. He climbed to the top of Nelson's column. Oh, my God. Anyone else are scared of heights? I am. Absolutely. How could you climb to the top of something like that? <clears throat> if his co-presenters, Peter Purvis and Valerie Singleton stood in televisual loco parentis. Noakes was your beloved daredevil uncle with energy and enthusiasm to spare for the kind of spontaneous, crazy projects your parents could never quite bring themselves to get behind. And like all the best uncles, he had a dog, Shep. The only one who could match him for energy and enthusiasm often indeed overmatching him, hence the emergence of Noak's most common and favourite utterance, Get down, Shep! <laughs> Shep was a beautiful dog. It was a, like a collie dog, black and white thing he was. Beautiful little dog. My own vivid memory of Noak's is not of him on Blue Peter or Go With Noak's, a series that ran for five years afterwards, of which I was an avid fan, but of him as a gift on another sh of a guest on another show in early 1987 being questioned about what Shep was doing now. Now, I remember this. I remember this. I wasn't necessarily there sitting there watching the programme. It was kind of on. And I saw John Noakes. I was immediately drawn to the television. He tearfully, though still with the underlying uh, stoicism, of the Yorkshire man, as he was, announced that Shep had died a few days before. It was the talk of the school the next day, which, just as his own grief bore witness to the importance of that endlessly eager, bawdy collie, border collie in his own life, was a testimony to the centra centrality of Shep and Noakes and Blue Peter to our own. Because there was only that trio of television channels at the time. And it was only television and books, if you could be bothered with books. And not, much, and not much even on them that was dedicated to children. The little we had, that, that five o'clock time on the, on the television, the little we had was loved and bonded over. Television created unity that cut across the cliches, uh, the cliques, in a way that whatever the other benefits bought by the multimedia, multi-platform, multi-screen life, it does not and cannot now. It's, and it's true. It's true. Does everyone gather around the television at a, bet, at a time now and all join together? Is that right? Is that better? I don't think it is. 
There is still, despite the steady plundering and erosion of the concept by brands and hipsters, such as a thing as genuine nostalgia, a sentimental longing for a past with which you have a personal connection. For thousands of us, uh, well, actually more than that, for tens of thousands of us of a certain age, Noakes is that personal collection with a collective past and the great outpouring of affection and sadness that has been online and in what we tend to call in the strange multi-screen times, real life instead of just life. We mourn the loss, perhaps, of both. And uh, it, it uh, and that's the story. His family have said they would like him to be remembered for his many escapades with Shep on Blue Peter, and that is exactly as it was be. So, so that's the John Noakes thing. Here he is again, boys and girls. John Noakes with his lovely dog Shep, and um, you know when someone dies like that, it's it's it it, it really is like a member of the family dying. So John Noakes, rest in peace, and thank you for the wonderful times uh, that that you helped me as a child, as well as my parents, teachers, and everything else. He was a big part of my life. I never knew him. He never knew me. We never met. We never spoke. But you 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 kind of connected with him, like an uncle. Or like uncles were now. I mean, the whole thing between uncles and children now is very different, isn't it? And aunts. Whereas before, I think some of the conversations that I had with my uncles when I was small, well, they were hardly conversations. They were more like yeses and noes, you know what I mean? Whereas now, certainly with my nephews and nieces, they are more of close friends where you can discuss almost anything with them. Some of the things we say to each other, I wouldn't dream of conversing with my uncles, and yet they do with me. I think it's changed a lot, hasn't it? And John Noakes was kind of a, an old-fashioned uncle, just like the old, like like, like the uncles um, that I had then. And I've still got one. I, I think I've only got one, two uncles left. I've got two uncles left now. Lost, uh, lost one last year. Uncle Terry. He was a, he was old school. He was a good laugh. Uncle Terry. He used to make his own beer. In um. In, uh, in in buckets, literally, in a shed. <laughs> oh, it was awful. It was so strong, this stuff. I'm surprised he didn't die earlier, to be honest. <laughs> Good old Uncle Terry. Um, let's have a look here. John's, uh, John says, hello, John. Uh, John says, how's your baby, by the way, John? I hope your little child is all right, okay? John says, difficult for Doctor Who is, say, John Pertry was good, didn't mind Peter Davidson, but another can't remember his name. Uh, Tom Baker, I bet it's Tom Baker. He was great, Tom Baker. John Pertry was my top, top favourite. Close, very, very close second, Tom Baker. Yeah, all right. Uh, Terry says that uh, John Lokes was such a great and kind man, a great icon for kids. And you know, Terry, I've never, ever heard anyone say anything bad about John Lokes. Have you? I think there was a little story going around once that he, he actually didn't enjoy his time on Blue Peter. I find that very difficult to believe. But whether he did or did or didn't, um, you know, we, we absolutely loved him, didn't we? All right. Uh, Kevin says he was uh, sad about John. How's your cat? Oh, she's all right. She's coming along all right, the old cat. Don't you worry about that, all right? Right, well, we've got a lot of birthdays to do this morning, boys and girls, so let's do those right now. Uh, happy of this. There's a lot of birthdays. There was only one the other day, wasn't there? And today, I think we've got about 20 birth. Yeah, we've got 21 birthdays today. So here we go. And then we'll disappear and I shall leave you alone while I have a nice cup of tea. And uh, I don't know what was, you know, after reading that cut your grass, story, I don't know if I should cut it or not, my grass. <laughs> I don't know if I should cut my grass now. I'll certainly cut it out the front, but at the back, I'm tempted to, um, to what do you reckon I should do? Shall I cut it or not? Or shall I leave it? And cut perhaps a path going from one side to the other and see what happens. Or is that just going to look awful? I suppose I could leave a bit of it uncut, couldn't I? The bit around the tree I could leave uncut, actually. But then I won't see my borders on the side, will I? 
I think I'll call it. I think I'll call it. Happy birthday today to Leslie Wright, to Laura and Richardson, who's a young 27 today. Happy birthday, Laura. Uh, Carol Lynch today is 60 years old. Alex Suzko is 21 years old. Looking good with the shades on, sir. Wolfgang. I didn't know it was your birthday day. My very, very, very good friend from Germany, Wolfgang, tonight is 67 years old. He was so excited two years ago when he got to the um, uh, pensions age. We had a little bit of a sort of, you know, a quietish party, didn't we, uh, Wolfgang? I remember you got to your pensions age and you announced that you'd retired. So happy birthday to Wolfgang today, 67 years old. A lovely man, karaoke singer. Uh, David Hand, happy birthday, David Hand. Orlando Gallardo is 46 years old today. Andrew McHardy. Alex Constantino is 45 years old today. Happy birthday, Alex. Zoe Wallace, 32. A lovely balloon on your little profile there. An I love you balloon. And I love you too. I love you. Whoever you vote for and whatever religion you are, I love you. Remember that. Remember that. I have my preferences, of course, dear. But I still love you anyway. Julie Pare, happy birthday. Uh, Stephen Wilkinson, happy birthday. Debbie Glees, is it? Guys, I beg your pardon. Debbie Guys, lovely dogs you've got there, Debs. Happy birthday, Debbie. Paris King, happy birthday, Paris King. Michael Lorenzo, what a wonderful surname that is. Lorenzo, 35 years old today. Danny O'Keefe. Joseph Freeman, 67 today. Andy Spiegel, happy birthday, Andy. Todd Carroll, 35 years old today. And Peter Giles is 38 years old today. So let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Let's sing happy birthday to you all. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Have a wonderful day. John says, Cheers, Chris. Tom Baker was great in um, Doctor Who. Uh, the baby's good. Getting big nine and a half months now, really, and still needs to meet her uncle, Chris. You should bring her down to the karaoke. <laughs> Bring your little girl down to the karaoke. That would be good. She can do her first song. <laughs> what could she sing? Let me think. Justin Bieber. That's, that's a young person song, isn't it? <laughs> Baby karaoke. This could be the next big thing, John. Baby karaoke, are you liking the sound of that, sir? <laughs> I love it. Uh, Heidi says, my son can name all the doctors. Can you really? Dear me. Um, Alan says, I haven't watched Blue Peter for many years. Is it still going? Yeah, it's on tonight. I've actually set the recorder for tonight. Five o'clock on children's uh, breakfast, uh, children's um BBC Channel. I've record, I'm recording it tonight to see what they say. They've got to say something about John Noakes today, surely. They must do on there today. So uh, I've, I've recorded that. I, I will be recording that and I shall watch that, OK? Um, John, do be careful. He nearly dropped the baby's Weetabix. Do be careful, John. And don't pick it up off the floor and reuse it. Chuck it away and give her another bit. All right. Uh, and Kevin says uh, he advises me to cut the grass. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening, boys and girls. I'm going to go and cut my grass now and have a nice cup of tea and wait for my air conditioning man to call. And I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy your Thursday. It's going to be a beautiful day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.